It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Welcome to the 2019 Go Red for Women event with the American Heart Association. It is our opportunity to allow the community to provide information so that we can, as women, take charge of our heart health. On behalf of the Honorable Frank G. Jackson, Cleveland City Council, the Cleveland Department of Public Health, the Black History Planning Committee, the Cleveland Office of Minority Health and Healthy Cleveland, we welcome you to today's event. In order to get underway, we're going to have some brief remarks from Director Grady Stevenson from the Community Relations Board, Merrill Gordon, Director of the Department of Public Health, and representation from Cleveland City Council, our Councilwoman Phyllis Cleveland and Donna Brady in that order. Good afternoon. My name is Grady Stevenson. I am the Executive Director of the Department of Community Relations for the City of Cleveland. I want to welcome you all here on behalf of our Black History Committee all those who worked so hard for this event, I want to thank you for your attendance today. I thank you because this is a special day when you start talking about uh, women's health. So on behalf of Mayor Frank Jackson, the 56th mayor of the city of Cleveland, I want to welcome you all here to City Hall Rotunda and to ask you to uh, relax and celebrate this great occasion that we're here to celebrate today, women's health. As we uh, set off to celebrate our Black History Month and, and do all the things that will bring us closer together as a people and make us a healthier nation, I want to thank you for stopping, pause, and taking your time out to come and share with us today. So on behalf of uh, Mayor Jackson, the Community Relations Board, and all those that have uh, worked real hard to get this program going, thank you and God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Meryl Gordon. I'm the director of the Cleveland Department of Public Health. Welcome to this special day where we bring this resource fair to you to help women prevent what is the leading cause of death in the United States. One in about four female deaths are caused by cardiac health. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is also the leading cause of death for African American and white women in the United States. We know that this risk factors for heart disease include diabetes, being overweight, poor and unnutritious diets, physical inactivity, and the excessive use of alcohol. This annual event also demonstrates our longstanding partnership with the Cleveland Department of Public Health and the American Heart Association. And we ask all of these vendors here today to bring all these resources to women and to men and their loved ones so that you can learn about this issue and prevent um, being part of those statistics I just read off. I want to thank you, thank the organizers here today to bring this event on. Sandy Wood, who is a um, tireless organizer, Francis Mills for emceeing today, and all of our panel here today who you'll hear from in a minute. We also want to thank all of our sponsors, um, including CareSource, and our hospital systems that are with us here today, University Hospitals, Cleveland Clinic, the St. Vincent's, and Metro Health Systems. 
We applaud all your work around prevention and, when needed, the exceptional health care, especially around heart and cardiovascular health care that you provide to uh, people in our community. This afternoon, we'll hear from two stellar speakers along with our council representatives, um, Councilwoman Brady and Councilwoman Cleveland, who have been ardent supporters of this event and come each year to make sure that they also express their concern about this issue. First, I would like to call up Valerie Hillow Gates. She's the executive director for the American Heart Association. She has spent her career at the American Heart Association here in Cleveland and also in Philadelphia. We have a proclamation from the mayor, which I would like to present, along with Director Grady Stevenson, and really in, your, in our appreciation, thank you, for the work that you and the organization does for cardiac health and for health for women and men in our community. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll hear from Valerie, but I also am looking forward to um, Dr. Zarif Zarafi, um, who will be speaking to us today as well. She has an impressive, impressive resume and has done so much work in this area, and we look forward to learning from her today as well. So Valerie, I think you had a few comments to share as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here today, and the proclamation is certainly exciting. We are thrilled to celebrate American Heart Month here in Cleveland and again this year at the City of Cleveland in this beautiful rotunda. At the American Heart Association, we are proud to connect with you to help Cleveland residents create a culture of health across our neighborhoods. To build that culture of health together, we are fortunate to have the support of dedicated volunteers, community leaders, and local businesses. Whether working to lower the smoking rates or funding local researchers as they discover new ways to beat, treat, and prevent heart disease and stroke, we are with you and we are working to serve you. As we aim to be a relentless force for a world full of healthier, longer lives, having supporters across our schools, our local businesses, and in our community allows us to reach more people with two simple messages. One, know the warning signs, and two, adopt healthier habits. Because up to 80% of cardiovascular disease is preventable. Learning how to quickly identify the symptoms of a heart attack or stroke is critical to the chain of survival. The sooner that we seek treatment, the better the chances we have at a quality recovery. How do we know if we are having a heart attack? It's not always just pain in the chest that we need to be aware of. Look for things like discomfort in your arms, back, and jaw. Know that nausea can even be a sign. For us women in particular, the symptoms <clears throat> can be subtle. When you recognize that your own body doesn't feel right to you and your symptoms last for five minutes, call 911. Learn to recognize a stroke fast by thinking of the letters F-A-S-T. F, facial drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. When you notice these signs, it's T, time to call 911. You may have heard that it is now estimated 49% of Americans have heart disease. That number reflects changes in blood pressure guidelines a growing culture that is sedentary, and increases in childhood obesity. But the good news is this, today is always the best day to start to put our health first. During American Heart Month, we encourage everyone to move more. Find an activity that you like and keep doing it. Invite friends, get your heart rate going, and seek ways to be active for an hour every day. We also want to find ways to eat smart and add more color to our plates, more veggies, more fruits. 
Small changes can make a big difference. Minimize the added sugars, limit our sodium intake, add seasonal produce at every meal, choose lean proteins and practice moderation. And of course, we all want to find ways to just be well. That may mean meditating or yoga, just taking a quiet afternoon walk with our kids, some of us may be seeking ways to lower our stress as a way to improve our health. Whichever journey to wellness that you are on, the American Heart Association is proud to support you in your efforts to keep your heart and your brain healthy for years to come. Thank you again for welcoming us here today to be a part of the celebration of a healthier Cleveland. Life is why we choose to be healthy. Science and research are how we can improve our health, and Cleveland is where we will do it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get us back on the agenda. I apologize for that. Um, there are three women on Cleveland City Council, two represented here today. Um, they are strong, they are smart, and they are ardent representatives of their community and on issues such as this today. I'm really looking forward to hearing from them. Councilwoman Brady, if you'd like to start, and then Councilwoman Cleveland. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? I like all the red in the, in the room. I forgot. There's only 28 days in February. The 20th came, like, really fast. Um, you know, I often tell the story, um, for those of you that might have been here before, I was only 10 years old when my father came home on um, a few days before Christmas and he was sweating and he didn't feel well and he was only 42 years old. And, um, and you know, he was like, somebody get me to the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with me. This was before we knew very much about you know, heart disease, although my grandfather had died of heart disease. He had had five heart attacks before he died. So um, my, my father had to spend 30 days in the hospital. That was before bypasses. That was before any kind of you know, medications or anything like that you know, to help him. So he couldn't move. He had to stay in bed for 30 days so that that clot wouldn't, you know, move and, you know, kill him. Um, so when he came home, I noticed him running around the house doing his exercises. He would be jogging, you know, back and forth from the bedroom to the living room and around the kitchen and back and forth. And that's how he got his exercise. And my mother took great pains in learning how to cook uh, healthier measuring how much meat he, you know, how much beef he was eating, you know, and he really, she really did something important for the rest of the family. And that was that we were cognizant of, you know, those types of foods that, even though we did cheat and eat them, but, but we were cognizant not to eat too much of the foods that were bad for our heart. So, you know, that stuck with me my whole life. My father just passed away a couple years ago at the age of 92. So, you know, um, that, was, that was great. Um, the other thing that I want to say is I grew up in the time when it was believed by the medical community that only men had heart attacks. Yet yeah, women did not suffer heart attacks. I don't know why they thought that, but you know that's the way it was. So women were not screened for heart attacks. So what I want to say to everybody today is, please go to see your doctor. Generally, your lipid panel and your um, physical is covered um, as a preventive uh, form of medication for you. Um, but have your liver, uh, you know, your lipid panel done, and if you find something early, it's not too soon to start correcting it. And so, you know, I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate this, and, um, you know, I wish you all the health in the world from my heart. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. 
it's so good to see you all again this year. <clears throat> and I'd just like to say, uh, again, another welcome to City Hall. And thank you from my heart for all the work that you all do year round in advocating for and encouraging women to be healthy, to take better care of ourselves. Because we know if we take care of ourselves, we also take care of our families. And I want to thank uh, Ms. Mills uh, as the Director of the Office of Community Health. Um, of course, um, the Director of Health, uh, Meryl Gordon, well, uh, thank you for all you do. Director Stevenson, uh, our great community, uh, community relations leader, and uh, Ms. Hillo Gates from the Heart Associations, our partners in this event every year. And I'm looking forward to great remarks and to learn a lot from our, our guest speaker this year. I really enjoyed this event. I love seeing all the red, but most of all, I love because every time I come, every year, I learn something new that I can go back and share with my family and friends. Um, one thought I do have, um, uh, recently I learned some information about uh, a relative, actually a couple of relatives of mine who have already passed on, but we know a lot of times with older people, they're, they're secretive of people of previous generations. They're kind of secretive and private about their health and their health issues. And I know my family was, and uh, you know, there are a lot of things that I was told, you know, none of my business, but it, it is our business. And so if you have older relatives, or you know your clients or, or people you deal with who are older, encourage them to share their history, especially their heart history with their families and their loved ones, um, because they'll be taking care of the next generation. Again, God bless you all for the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwomen. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Christine Zarafi from the Harrington Heart and Vascular Institute of University Hospitals of Cleveland. Dr. Zarafi's medical career spans over 27 years and encompasses a series of high profile firsts in the world of cardiology and is supported by an impeccable reputation in her field and in the community. She is widely recognized as a compassionate, deeply skilled and progressive physician who has dedicated herself to improving patient outcomes and reducing post-operative complications with every pioneering procedure that she has perfected. Dr. Zarafi obtained her MD from Northeastern Ohio Medical University and completed her residency at the University of Texas Medical School at Houston. She subsequently undertook her fellowship in cardiology at UT's Health Science Center and then returned to Ohio. Dr. Zarafi also practiced at University Hospital's Parma Medical Center, where she established and evolved the first door-to-ballroom STEM program in Northeastern Ohio, and became the third female doctor in the world to certify in rotational coronary arthrectomy. Christine was the first private practice cardiologist to perform a pacemaker implantation in Cleveland, and is also extremely experienced in the areas of quality and outcomes. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Christine Zarafi. Let us receive her. Good afternoon. It's great to see all of you. Uh, as she told you, I'm what's called an interventional cardiologist, meaning I'm one of those people you see if you do have a heart attack or chest pain that would take you to the catheterization laboratory and put a stent in. And you might say, why am I here? Well, through my career, I've done about 14,000 procedures and it dawned on me, I'm kind of like putting the finger in the dike and I want to get more on the prevention end and get the word out, especially to women, okay? Often through our life, women put their husbands, their partners, or their children, or their parents ahead of themselves, rather than taking care of yourself. And nobody's gonna take care of you as of yourself as well as you will. So therefore, the American Heart Association started the Go Red campaign, because the Heart Association, we didn't even do research on women up until about 20 years ago. So we have to get the facts out because heart disease is the number one cause of death in women. And when we look at our risk factors, most of our risk factors for heart disease are preventable. We can prevent 90% of the strokes and heart attacks that we have by knowing our risk factors. 
And we divide these into what we can modify and what we can't. The two we can't are our age, we have to get older or the alternative isn't good, or knowing your family history. And by that it means has anyone in your family, whether it's a parent or a sibling, had a heart attack or a stroke if they were a man before the age of 55 or a woman before the age of 65. If they had, that puts you possibly in a higher risk group. The other things we want you to know is to know your ABCs. A is the age, B is your blood pressure. Okay, you have to know your blood pressure. These are all numbers you should know. If your physician or your nurse practitioner or PA doesn't tell you, make sure you get these numbers especially for the African-American population out here. High blood pressure or hypertension is especially dangerous in African-Americans. And that has to do with the way that African-Americans handle their salt different than other races. And that stems from the fact that you originated in Africa, which unlike Cleveland, is a hotter climate, and so you needed to retain your salt and water in order to survive where there wasn't a lot of water or whether you were more in desert situations. Unfortunately, when you're living in America or Cleveland, you still have those genetics, but we don't need them here. But that results in a more virulent form of hypertension with a much higher incidence of having a stroke or a heart attack. And when those events happen, African Americans have a much higher death rate. So very important that we all know our blood pressures. The other thing that's next is important is C, A, B, C, our cholesterol. And by that, I mean our total cholesterol, but also have it broken up into our good and our bad cholesterols. An easy way to remember that is your LDL, think L for lousy, that's the number that's the most important. If that's high, that's what help causes heart attacks or strokes because that type of cholesterol is what blocks up our arteries. You should also know your HDL. Think H for happy. That's protective. So the higher that number is, the less chance you will of having a heart attack or a stroke. The other number is your triglycerides or your fats. And the higher that is also plays into having a heart attack or a stroke. So know your numbers. The D in our ABCD stands for diabetes or your blood sugar. Very important to know if you're a diabetic or not. E stands for what we do in our everyday life. That means how we eat. I think you've been learning a little bit today about eating healthier, very important. Most of our food in America has four times the salt we need, so you need to get away from doing this. I see so many people out to dinner, and they don't even taste their food, and they're already putting salt on it. So you need to kind of wean yourself off of that. And you will find, as you do, when you go to eat other food, it's gonna seem so salty, okay? And you can use any other spice, so it can still taste good, but get away the, from the salt. The other thing to think about with E is exercise, okay? And you don't have to go out for a jog or run, okay? The American Heart Association recommends doing 30 minutes of activity at least five days a week. And by that, it can be broken up. You don't have to do it all at once. So go for a walk at lunchtime. I always have everybody, every hour, stand up and try to move around for five minutes if you can. Or even just try to stand up if you're at your desk in a sedentary job. All very important to do these things, okay? If you have a dog, take the dog out for a walk. People who have dogs actually live longer because they don't consider it exercise, but you have to get up off the couch and you gotta take that dog out, okay? So it's a very nice way to get outside, which is also good for our health. So think of all of these simple numbers and things to do and incorporate those. Because unfortunately, we have been making marked inroads in how we treat people with heart problems, but we just had the latest statistics come out from 2017 and there was one group where we saw the incidence and death rate go up, and that had to do with young women. 
and that's directly related to the fact that we're seeing a problem with obesity, which in turn leads us to have problems with elevated blood pressures, elevated cholesterols, and also diabetes or elevated blood sugars. So we really need to think about starting at all ages. We make our first blockages when we're teenagers, around 12 or 13. So very important that your whole family starts to live healthy. There's, it's never too late to start to live healthy. You can stabilize or reverse these problems. The other big thing we need to do is make sure we do not smoke. Smoking is the best thing you can do, quit smoking, to improve your health. And unfortunately, there also we've seen an uptick, and that's related to the development of e-cigarettes or vaping. And it's become an epidemic. The CDC does, just declared it an epidemic in teenagers and young adults. And these cigarettes, they have nicotine in them, which is addicting, but they also have many thousands of chemicals that we don't even need, we don't even know because they don't have to tell us. Two big ones we do know are formaldehyde, which is embalming fluid. So imagine putting that in your lungs and your body. And benzene, which is a chemical that causes liver cancer. So very important to talk with your kids or anybody else about e-cigarettes and vaping. And one of those jewels, just one of those little pods, is equivalent to a pack of cigarettes. OK, so very important. So very simple approaches, know your A, B, C, D, E's, and tobacco. The other thing we want to make uh, an emphasis on for younger women is if they've had any complications with their pregnancy, okay, if they had diabetes that developed during their pregnancy, or high blood pressure during their pregnancy, or what we call preeclampsia or eclampsia, and that's very important because that gives us an insight into how your blood vessels are in your body. So if you've had any of these problems with your pregnancy, it puts you at much higher risk of developing heart attacks or strokes in the future. So think back to your pregnancies and think if you've had any of these problems. It's important to let your physicians know so that you can also undergo further testing that you might need. So very important for you to become an advocate for yourself. And it's not just February. It's all year round that we need to be advocates. And you can improve your heart risk if you do these simple things by knowing your numbers, getting your blood pressure and cholesterol under control, not smoking, and being active for at least 30 minutes a day. So thank you very much for having me here today. And go red every day. So I have a couple of um, acknowledgments and uh, closing remarks, and then we're going to turn it over to, I guess, our committee from here. I would like to thank um, our hospitals, the community organizations for being here today. Um, this event would not be possible without you all, and so I wonder if you would help me and give them a great round of applause for being here today. Thank you for, to Valerie Hill Gates the Executive Director of the Heart, um, American Heart Association, Dr. Zafari, uh, for being here today. Thank you to Marie Ritchie from CareSource, Tiffany Riggs with Paramount Advantage for your support and sponsorship. Uh, our honorees today Val, uh, is Val Scott. She cannot be here today, so I will accept um, this plaque on her behalf. So again, from the Black History Committee, Community Relations Department, our Mayor, Mayor Frank D. Jackson, and all those that are here today, um, our Health Director, Mayor, G Mayor Gordon, um, our keynote speaker, our honorees today, thank you so much. Our MC for the day, thank you for a great job. And thank you to all of you again for coming out today. God bless you.